The yeah. show is called Austin After Hours. So what do you guys do for fun after hours in Austin? Sleep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, you got what, a wild one what, here, y'all. We got what, a live one. <laughs> what we, yeah, what, yeah. Calm down. So much has changed since we've seen each other last. Yeah. You're a father of two now. Two, and a girl. Yeah. yeah, so how's that going? It's good. Uh, we have a little daughter named Stevie. She started sleeping like a week ago, so oh, it's like, wow. a new, it's like a new beginning. So how does Hank, your son, feel about being a big brother now? Most people have the problem when the baby comes home. Mm -hmm. He was good then, but you know, at that point they're a blob. Yeah. But now, you know, Stevie smiles and she gets interactions, so she gets a lot more of the traffic flow of conversation. So that was his test. What's your favorite part of fatherhood so far? Oh, I, I don't even want to have to choose. It, it's so funny because you can not sleep, you can be you know, run down, all you want is a moment of silence, and then all of a sudden, five minutes into that silence, you're like, where are the kids? I want them up. I want those <laughs> smiles. You're like, it's, it, you don't know what you want anymore. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> like, what level of dad joke are you at? Yeah, my wife will tell you I'm the oldest 35-year-old that's ever lived. <laughs> like, I'm so boring. She, I, I probably had the, the dad joke game before I was even a dad. Oh, like, that, that. that bad. As cool as I might have been once upon a time, it was a slippery slope towards dad, dad joke dumb. Uh -oh. That's a thing. Yeah, so, so now uh, we've got, like, socks and Birkenstock sandals on the reg. It's pretty tragic, yeah. <laughs> 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 what about Austin as a home base? Why did y'all make that choice? Well, I was here uh, in 1986 when it was uh, still the best kept secret, not everyone's secret. I left for Florida. Uh, my brother played tennis, so we went there. And then uh, as soon as I had any money um, from tennis, I won the US Open on a Sunday and was here Monday buying a house in Austin. Brooke and I uh, obviously started dating in 2007. and. She adopted it quickly. She loved it. It was a good time to try to convince someone to, to, to live here with you. Yeah. There's so many like endearing, weird cliches here. What's one of your favorites? Like breakfast tacos are a way of life or no one can pronounce street names right. I read this children's book to my, to my son and it's like kind of an adult's take on Austin. It's like Austin grew and it always has this old guy who appears on the different pages saying these crazy things. Like what? And he's pointing across to the skyscrapers and he goes, that skyscraper used to be Willie Nelson. <laughs> like he <it's, laughs> kind of like sums it up. Like everything used to be cooler. Now those things that used to be cooler are now exaggerated versions of cool. Yes, exactly. Like a Willie Nelson used to play in six bars in one night. Like, that never happened, right? right yeah. <laughs> We're a big dog town. Do you have dogs? We have two uh, English bulldogs who are uh, allergic to heat, so not exactly a match made in heaven. How but, does that work? Uh, it's, it's a logistical thing. <laughs> they can go out for like eight minutes at a time, but then they have to come in. So it's a, we didn't really think it through that well. Yeah. What are your dog's names? Uh, Billie Jean, who is named after Billie Jean King, and our other one is Bob Costas. So what's it like when you get phone calls from the vet? It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. Because they always say, Bob Costas has had his shots. We'd like you to come pick Bob Costas up. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll be laughing randomly from like the next room and everyone knows that our dog's ready to be picked up. Is it true that Chrissy Teigen's dog and you have a special connection? Yeah, so, well, God rest uh, that dog's soul, but uh, Chrissy Teigen's mom named their dog a long time ago, Andy Roddick. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, before y'all knew each before other? Before we knew each other. So it was a little creepy. And the thing is, is they had kept it this creepy secret, and we've been friends for over a decade now. And it was like two years into our friendship, and they're like, it was like an oh, by the way. I'm like, that's not an oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Explain yourself. Why yeah. did you want to start the Andy Roddick Foundation? I think I was lucky to be in this vacuum of the tennis world. Tennis has created a culture of using your platform uh, to do something different. It's your duty, that's what you want to do. And then you kind of find your lane in what we've done with a focus on out of school time programs. That's our biggest way to affect change here in Austin. I think I was right place, right time with the right people telling me what to do. And you know, then you have these conversations where are we gonna go you know, extremely deep with uh, a smaller amount of kids? Or are we gonna kind of try to sprinkle fairy dust and we can kind of claim the rhetoric. We serve 10,000 kids and that's a lot easier to sell in 30 seconds or, or a minute. But we decided to go kind of what we thought was the responsible route with really kind of uh, investing in that first group and we had 80 kids then we'll serve over 3400 kids this summer so to kind of see it grow out where we're at our, our third school uh, we run 11 different sites for Austin Parks and Recreation and really be the leader in the space of out of school time which is super important especially with income divide that is present in Austin yeah those summer months are so important if you're a 
a single parent, which most of our, our, our parents are, yeah. uh, from the kids in our program, and all of a sudden you don't have to leave at two o'clock to pick your kid up. And you know that not only are they being supervised, but there's been a value add. They're being That's educated. Right. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you get three or four hours more a day that you can work and you can become that much better of a provider that takes away a lot of problems. That's been something that I don't know that I gave enough credit to when we started, and it's been a huge thing, especially since Brooke and I have become parents. When those parents come and say, I can provide. I'm like, oh. You yeah. started, obviously the priority number one is the children, but we've affected the entire family, which has been a, which has been a great thing. For you and Brooklyn, what's your favorite part about watching her be a mom? Oh gosh. Yeah, so we weren't worried about her being a mom. <laughs> like, that was good, her nurturing skills and her. Yeah, you were yeah, the one yeah, at home? I think, yeah, it's like we've been pleasantly surprised with the fact that I'm average at, at being a dad. She never skips out on anything. Yeah. You know, she's, she's, we, we never had a night nurse. I don't know how she does it, but it's fun to watch. What about with your kiddos? How much talking's going on right now? Hank's been talking forever. He dropped a cuss word the other day for the first time. Oh, that how was did that fun. go? That was interesting. My wife looks at me like, obviously, and then she puts it on Twitter, and it's like, everyone's like, it's your fault for sure. Oh, is that the true story or is that the no, Twitter version? No, well, I was a crazy person on the tennis court, but away, she, she'll tell you she has the worst temper. Like, it's just the way it is, you know? No one believes me. It was in the proper context. When the sentences get more advanced, what do you hope he says about you? You want respect first. You want to teach life's lessons, even if it's the long play and he's mad at you at moments. Right. Like, even looking back, I wish my father was still here because every day with Hank, I realize, gosh, he was in the long game. He didn't care about me liking him in that moment. Like, it was more important that the lesson was learned over time. And I'm still looking back and going, oh, that's why I did it. If anything, the longer that Hank looks at our relationship, the more he understands the practices involved, maybe. Yeah, and it is, it's so nice to have that perspective and just yeah. be in awe of how brilliant the people that brought you up were. Did you have like a Last Supper in Austin before the kids came? One wild <laughs> night out? Brooke, yes. Oh. Some of my tennis friends came into town. I mean, it might have been two weeks before she delivered. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm out being an idiot till two, two hours plus in the morning. Were you, were you there that night? No. Sorry, I'm talking to my friend Jesse off camera. <laughs> it was a mess. And finally at 2.15, she goes, you're going to be a father. We're going home. I'm like, oh, damn it. Okay. And that's a wrap and on that And that's a wrap on nights past two. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Cheers yeah, to that. Cheers, thank and you. And that's why we day drink now. <laughs> yeah, Cheers, right. Andy.